Oh, uh, crap. Give me a sec. After seven long years, we finally have confirmation that Metroid Prime 4 is real. Now, there's been lots of rumors and speculation on why this game took so long to come out. Everything from pandemic-related delays to the devs completely scrapping everything and starting over. But today, I'm here to expose the real reason behind this game's cursed development. Metroid Prime 4 has taken so long to come out because Samus Aran is dead and you killed her. No, this isn't some metaphysical theory about how Samus died in the original Metroid and every subsequent game has been her journey through the afterlife. This is the real world science behind the Morph Ball. I've looked at a lot of insane physics in video games before, but this one might just be the craziest one yet. Richard, uh, hit that intro. who aren't familiar, Metroid is a classic Nintendo franchise featuring space bounty hunter Samus Aran, or Samus Aran, if you prefer names that sound bad. She's got a cool spacesuit, lots of laser guns and gadgets, uh, she's basically Boba Fett if he actually did anything aside from just stand behind Vader and look cool. Most of Samus' upgrades are pretty self-explanatory. You got missiles, grappling beams, double jumps, stuff like that. But perhaps simultaneously her most iconic and bizarre pickup that features in every single game is the Morph Ball, which allows Samus to curl up into a tiny ball to fit through small gaps. It's easy to gloss over this ability as just another game mechanic, but the more you think about it, the more questions come up, like, where does her gun go? How does she see anything? And perhaps most importantly, how the heck does she even get in there? In my research, I've seen a lot of theories on how Samus could achieve this, from contortionism to nanotech to Pokeball energy technology. But I think before getting to any of that, it's best that we take a step back and ask the question, is it even possible to fit a suit's worth of matter into this little ball? And to answer this, we need to talk about density. In physics, density is defined as the mass of an object divided by its volume. Basically, it's how much stuff is in a certain space. The human body has an average density of 985 kilograms per meter cubed. Now, at a first glance, you might think that you could increase your density by curling up into a tight ball. Your mass or weight has not changed, but you're taking up less physical space, so you become more dense. But this isn't actually true. No matter how you contort your body, your total volume will never change. It's just being more concentrated. It's easier to see in 2D, if I take all the parts of this stick figure and condense them together, I could fit them in a smaller space, but the total volume remains the same. We've just gotten rid of the empty space in between. Basically, the TLDR is that no matter how much you contort your body, your density remains constant. This is important because it allows us to find out how small of a ball Samus could really turn into. If we find the density of Samus and her suit, then we know that her ball form should have the exact same density. If we try to then calculate the density of her ball form and find that it's the same or lower than her standing form, then the morph ball transformation is, at least in theory, possible. If it's greater than her density in standing form though, then it is physically impossible for Samus to get up in there no matter how many double joints she's got. So, in order to find the density of Samus, we need two things, her volume and her mass. And for both of these, we're gonna need some measurements. 
Unfortunately, there seems to be some discrepancies as to how big Samus is. In the official Super Metroid Player's Guide, Samus is listed as being 6 feet 3 inches tall, or 190.5 centimeters, and 198 pounds, or 89.8 kilograms, without her suit on. However, pretty much every other source that I could find bills her at 6 foot 3, 198 pounds, while in the suit. For that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and chalk the player's guide up to either a mistake or a misleading page layout and use this as the measurement for Samus in her Varia suit. So we have the total mass of 89.9 kilograms, now we just need the volume. And now, this is the part of the video where I could go through the difficult process of trying to estimate the volume of the various suit with lots of assumptions and approximations about the shape and proportions and painstakingly find the volume of each individual segment of the suit, or I could work smarter and not harder and just let Nintendo do all the work for me. By simply grabbing an official 3D model of Samus's suit from the first Metroid Prime, importing it into a 3D modeling software like Blender, and scaling it up to her canon height, we can let it calculate the exact volume of the various suit to be 1.1027 meters cubed. Dividing the official mass from earlier by this volume, we can find that Samus, with her suit on, has a total density of 81.44 kilograms per meter cubed. Now, eagle-eyed viewers among you may notice that this is a lot less than the density of a human from before. This means that either A, the metal that makes up the suit has a very low density or B, there's a lot of empty space inside the suit, making the density of the whole system much lower. Also, it's possible that Samus herself has a much lower density than a regular human. She is like, like part bird or something, I think? Look, I'll be honest, Dread is a great game. The story made absolutely no sense. So that's step one complete. Now onto step two, finding the density of the morph ball. Using reference images and pixel measurements from a couple of different games, we can find that the Morph Ball is a third of Samus's full height, making it 0.637 meters, or 2 feet 1 inch tall. We know that the mass is the same, Samus isn't shedding any parts to get into this form, and we can use the same process from before with a 3D model of the Morph Ball to find that it has a volume of 0.1339 meters cubed. Plugging those into the density equation, we find that Samus in her Morph Ball form has a total density of 670.72 kilograms per meter cubed which is over eight times more dense than her standing density and weirdly, maybe still possible. Because while 670.72 kilograms per meter cubed is a lot more dense than Samus in her suit form, it's still a lot less dense than the average density of a human at 985 kilograms per meter cubed, meaning that in theory, Samus could fit in a ball this size with room to spare. But how then can the Morph Ball be so much more dense than the suit without turning Samus into jelly? Well, remember earlier we speculated that there may be a lot of empty space between Samus and the suit, contributing to its low density. The space is likely filled with just air. Air has a much lower density than any metal or a human, so if all that air were simply expelled, it would allow the Morph Ball to be far more dense than the full suit. It's like how you can exhale all the air from your lungs to increase your own density and sink in the water, or why you sometimes need to squeeze some of the air out of a Ziploc bag to fold it up nice and small. From a suit engineering standpoint, this air also makes a lot of sense for a multitude of reasons besides just allowing it to condense into a tiny little ball. 
It can make the suit more maneuverable and comfortable to wear. It can allow Samus to control her buoyancy in water by releasing or taking in more air. And having a physically larger suit can make her look more imposing to hostile alien life, and keeping it hollow will keep the suit light. When I started writing this episode, I'm not gonna lie, I saw the difference between the suit density and the ball density and was all ready to talk about the horrific implications of having a person crushed down to an eighth of their size. But when I compared that to the density of a normal human, I had to recheck all my math. I mean, I must have messed up somewhere. There's no way that the morph ball is actually possible. But no, not only is there enough space for Samus and her suit in this ball, there's actually some room to spare. Now, of course, this is all just talking about pure volume. It's one thing for there to be enough space for Samus and her suit. It's a whole nother thing to actually get her to fit in there. But again, Samus is a bird, alien, doom guy, cosplayer person or something. Look, she's got a lot of weird stuff going on. So if they want to say that she can turn herself into jelly to fit in the ball, it wouldn't be the weirdest thing they've tried. But in the end, it looks like I was wrong. For once, the physics in a video game actually make a little bit of sense. So thank you, Nintendo, for championing scientific accuracy and realism in your games, and for completely ruining my joke that I set up at the very start of the episode where I reveal that Samus actually did die in the first game the first time he used the morph ball and crushed her to death and the rest of the games actually were her journey through the afterlife. The one time I was counting on you to throw some batsh insane physics my way, that's the one time you decide to actually do the math. Thanks guys, really appreciate that one. Now. I don't know, I gotta just do the stupid ball bit again. Stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. I just wanted this one, just this one thing, but no, now I look like the idiot. Unbelievable. And a massive thank you to all my patrons, including Alkazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for the win, Sidian, Gremlin the Goblin, Sherry and Mark, The Boss Killer 94, and Captain Kirby. This show would not be possible without your support, so thank you.